Hello YouTube. So if you guys have been around any online Genshin communities, such as Reddit, Discord, or even YouTube comment sections, you've probably seen the take that male DPS units are usually bad in comparison to the female ones. However, this take is so untrue, and at this point, I'm sick and tired of hearing it. These men are all kings, and they deserve to be treated as such. It's actually really baffling that this is even an argument people make when the female 5-star DPS have units with very glaring issues like Eula, Klee, Yorimiya, and Ayaka. So in this video, I am going to cover every on-field 5-star male DPS unit and talk about what makes them strong and unique. There are a lot of units to cover, so I will try to keep each explanation brief. So let's start with the original king. The look is unique in that he is the only 5-star pyro DPS in the game capable of properly utilizing forward melt instead of reverse vaporize as a prim primary means of dealing damage. Because forward melt has a 2x minimum multiplier, this allows the Luke to front load a lot of damage with pretty good AoE. The Luke also has very short field time requirements, sometimes taking as little as 8 seconds of field time per rotation. This low field time, along with his 12 second burst cooldown, allow him to perform short rotations, sometimes only 16 seconds long. He also has pretty decent team versatility, able to perform in Vaporize and Over Vape teams as well in addition to his Forward Melt teams. Shout has the best AoE Hydro application in the entire game. This allows him to perform as an excellent enabler for Zhongling to Vaporize almost all of her damage. His bust is also very strong and can be easily Vaporized which allows him to front load a lot of damage, and as such, do roughly the same amount of damage as Zhang Ling in the same team, which is saying a lot. On top of this, Chao is able to either extend his field time or cut it sh short as needed based on the situation. The combination of these traits give him one of the best speedrunning teams in the entire game. With the Lisa Farozan, Zhao can now do absolutely ludicrous amounts of damage. He is great in AoE because of how big the AoE on his plunges are. He is also great in single target if you learn his jet combos. His ST damage can also be taken even farther beyond against enemies with large hitboxes thanks to the extra collision plunge damage he's able to get. Zhao's long fill time also means that he can deal a very high amount of damage per rotation, which can be excellent for hitting HP thresholds to, to defeat a boss in a single rotation. Ito has pretty unconditional AoE with his charged attacks, which allows him to easily hit all nearby enemies even without needing to run a grouper. Ito also has room for skill expression to reach a higher ceiling on him, but doesn't actually lose much if you just Oonga Boonga with him instead. Although Ito is reliant on using him with his dedicated support Goro, he's actually not reliant on Goro's constellations, as even at constellation 0, Goro is very functional. Ito also has access to pretty decent front loaded damage with Ushi. Like Ito, Ayato also has excellent AoE and can hit most if not all nearby enemies even without a grouper. Because of his Hydro Element, Ayato also makes an excellent enabler for numerous teams. These teams range from Hyper Bloom, Virgin, Taser, and Vaporize, which are all pretty meta teams. Thanks to his burst, Ayato is also one of the few on-field DPS units that can also exude pressure from off-field. But what are they going to do? Block me up? Tanari is able to dish out a ton of single target damage in a very short DPS window. His low field time requirements, along with his dead draw element, give him versatile team options. It also allows him to pair with other units such as Yai Miko that take a bit of field time for their own DPS window. The combination of his front loaded damage along with Yai's and Faisal sustained damage can give him excellent team DPS. He's also carrying the highest amount of restraining orders out of any unit in the game. These restraining orders have banned him from using his OP Tainari Minos comp, however he still has great teams such as the Predator and the Prey. Huh? Sano is excellent at being an Electro Driver due to his fast application and innate EM scaling and buff. This allows him to consolidate the role of an Aggravate DPS and a Transformative Reaction DPS. 
with reactions such as Hyper Bloom and Overload. Seno's best teams also allow him to deal extremely high damage per rotation, while also being able to extend his fail time for even more. This makes him excellent at thresholding bosses to defeat them in a single rotation. Seno's teams also have to bet some of the best particle scaling in the entire game. You can invest farther into him via methods such as Nahida C2, Yelan C1 to C2, LG for the end, Staff of Scarlet Sands, and even his own constellations, as all of his constellations are pretty good. With 4 piece Thundering Fury, Sano also has th the second highest on field particle generation in the game, making about 12 particles for 3 and 0 rotation. This is second only behind Thundering Fury Bennett. Wanderer deals insanely high damage while also having a ton of excellent quality of life features, such as his incredible range. I believe Wanderer's normal attacks have the farthest range in the entire game, tied with Yanfei. This range allows him to hit enemies from halfway across the abyss, meaning you seldom ever have to run after enemies. This is great in multi-wave content where new enemies spawn on the other side of the abyss, and great against mobile enemies that move around a lot, such as Maku Kenki. His range is also not only horizontal, but also vertical, which allows him to hit annoying flying enemies like PMA, Golden Wolf Lord, and Aeon Blight Drake. This range is also very useful, as he doesn't have to leave Bennett's circle to hit enemies that are moving around a lot, thus allevi alleviating the circle impact issue other units have when paired with Bennett. He even has access to great front-loaded or back-loaded damage with his burst. Wonder also excels in both AoE and single target. His attacks have pretty good AoE and can be taken even farther by pairing him with Venti, who will do a lot of damage thanks to buffs from Farazan and Bennett. In single target, he pairs great with Yunjin, who can buff him by similar amounts to Bennett. This effectively allows him to have two dedicated supports, Farazan and Yunjin, both at the same time, which allows his damage to reach insane levels. He also has no hit lag, so her C6 is very beneficial. Wanderer even has access to shielders that provide him excellent value, such as Thoma and Layla. The high value they provide him both offensively and defensively prevents it from feeling like Wanderer has shield attacks. Wanderer is also one of the few 5-star DPS in the game that don't need any other 5-star units on his strongest team. This can make him incredibly efficient to build, as you know you only need to pull on his banners. On the other hand, he does need a C6 powers on, which can be harder to obtain than a 5 star unit if you don't get good luck. But this issue is alleviated by the fact that we can expect her to always be on his banners, and you already know you only need to pull on his banners anyway. So even if you have to go for a few constellations on Wanderer to C6 sir, this is much less of an issue since Wanderer's constellations are all incredible anyway. At constellation 6, he even becomes arguably the best or second best speedrunning DPS in the entire game. In fact, he actually beat C6 Yelan in the speedrunning competition not long ago. His team was much less expensive than hers. Alhytham is a Dendro driver, so he was already guaranteed to be good, even if he didn't do much else, as driving Dendro gives him access to so much team versatility. This versatility gives him access to so many powerful teams, such as Quicken, Hyperbloom, Virgin, and even Nilo Bloom teams. But in addition to driving Dentro, he's also dealing excellent damage relative to his role, having pretty good AoE. He even access to high front-loaded or back-loaded AoE damage with his burst. On top of this, he has incredible rotation versatility, as he isn't really restricted to a set rotation like most other units. This allows him to adapt to almost any situation, it even lets him completely alleviate the energy requirements you would think he has. All of these things combined make him an absolutely insane unit. And that covers all of the 5 star male DPS in the game at the time of recording this video. I hope this video helped put your mind at ease against all the senseless doom posting you see against these units, as they are all very good in their own unique ways. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leaving a comment would also be greatly appreciated. Thanks, bye.